Is there something that you always dreamed of doing since you were a kid, but then maybe life got in the way? Um, and, you know, now you're thinking, you know, it's like way too late to start. You know, I don't have the time or, you know, I'm just too old and, you know, I can't do anything. You know, well, I'm hoping that the story of like why I actually started creating music can help change your mind on that. So my name is Corey. If you haven't been here before, um, I write songs and, you know, perform, I sing, I play guitar, all that stuff. And it's something I didn't start doing until, you know, I was in my 30s. So completely ignored the side of me for, <laughs> you know, most of my 20s or actually all of my 20s. And eventually um, I've come to this point where I, I've actually had a, a couple album releases. I've played over 100 shows and you know, and this is after just me never thinking I had a music bone in my body outside of just being a fan. So just to give you some background, um, how this happened was in, I would say like 2008 ish, somewhere in there, I was in my mid to late thirties and I would, I started this podcast. I had a music blog and then I started a podcast. It was called music Goat was the name of the website. And then I had a podcast called the melting pot. And when you have a podcast, especially back then, I'm not sure how it works anymore, but back then I would get like a bunch of CDs in the mail. Um, I would get like two or three a day. My wife was like wondering what the hell I was doing. <laughs> you know, like she was thinking I was buying all these things, but I wasn't. Um, artists just sending them to me in the hopes that I would play it on the podcast. So I was getting those, I was getting emails with downloads and all that stuff. And I would get some great stuff, like stuff that was just like, like, wow. Like, for instance, one guy that I still love to this day that I discovered through this process was Chris Knight. Check him out sometime. Um, he's awesome. Great songwriter. But uh, anyway, um, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't good. And I mean, it was almost some of it was almost terrible. Um, not going to name names because that would just be, you know, not very nice. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. But this kept happening over and over. And I started getting curious. I'm like, you know, how are these people putting music out? You know, and it wasn't the the whole DIY music thing wasn't as big then as it is now. Um, and so I would go and I'd, I'd look at like their social media. And back then there wasn't much of that either. I think MySpace was still kind of hanging out, you know, hanging in there. I mean, it was in its last days. Um, people were just starting to, sh you know, start Facebook pages and all that stuff. But um, but I just saw that they had a following. And I was just like, I was kind of amazed at the fact that they could have a following um, and be selling music when their music just wasn't that good. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, well, shit, I can do way better than that, right? Like, at least I thought I could. Um, so, and, and that kind of coincided with, I started playing guitar a little bit more um, right around 2000. Like I had, in, in college, or college age, I sold all my gear. I sold my, I sold I had an electric guitar, I had an amp, and I had an acoustic guitar, and I sold it all because, I don't know, back then, you know, I guess drinking money was like way more important. <laughs> and I didn't think I was going anywhere anyway. Um, and part of that was just because I was, I was mainly a metal guy back then. And I figured, you know what, if I can't scream like Rob Helford and I can't um, play guitar like Ingve Malmsteen, well, there's just no hope for this guy. Right. Obviously that's just complete BS. Now I've, I've learned that because, you know, I'm more of a, I just, I don't need to have that. I mean, we've seen through the nineties that, you know, deeper voices and acoustic guitar can be rocky and can be a lot of things. So anyway, those things all kind of played a part in me realizing like, Hey, you know what? Um, maybe this is something I could do. I had start playing guitar like around campfires in front of friends and like, wow, you know, where'd you learn how to do that? You know, like people that knew me in my whole life, you know, up until this point in my late twenties were like, God, you know, I didn't know you could sing. I didn't know you could play guitar. And um, I was a little shy about it at first, but then people started encouraging me. So that just kind of led to this. And it's like, you know what? Let's do this. Let's figure this out. Um, so in about 2008, I wrote my first song called Change the World. Um, maybe here when I get to the editing process, I'll play it for you. or just play a little snippet for you. You want to change the world, you can't stand by. Just so you know, man, it starts inside. Gotta stop stumbling in darkness and start walking in light. You wanna change the world, you can't stand by. 
Um, but I wrote that song, and that was well received. So I just started getting into it. Um, you know, I started writing more songs, started booking some shows, and you know, I just kind of took it from there. So eventually, I came. You know, I've I've got two shows, or I'm sorry, two shows, two albums. Uh, played over a hundred shows, and you know, that's kind of that's kind of how I started. And ever since then. You know, after this is happening, I, I started having a lot of people come up to me and just asking me, um, you know, you know, what did you do? At first, people, I had a lot of friends that were thinking I was nuts. Like, I, I stopped doing some of the activities that I normally did. Like, I wasn't going, you know, I, I got out of bowling league. I started playing softball and whatever because I'm like, I'm all in. I'm going to start playing shows. And <laughs> I had friends that thought I was going nuts um, because I did that, you know. And it's like, they're like, what? You're just going to stop doing this to go do whatever. Um, but those, some of those same friends came back to me like a, you know, a couple of years later after I was, you know, playing some, some fairly high profile shows in the, in the, in the area. Right. And this is starting from zero, um, just playing gigs, open jams, all that kind of stuff. And then in like a couple of years I was playing, you know, some decent sized festivals, at least in our area. And I just remember a friend came up to me one day and he's just like, wow, you're like serious. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to, I didn't think you were really that serious about doing this. Uh, so it was kind of one of those moments. And then over the years, people have been coming up to me and, you know, just asking me like, hey, Corey, like how how did you do that? Or um, I kind of became inspirational to people, which was which is really awesome. So that kind of made me think, um, you know, and that's one of the reasons I titled my first album Never Too Late, because I just kind of wanted to be I wanted to inspire people, you know, like I'm trying to inspire people out there right now, like you, maybe that's watching this video, that it is never too late. Um, you can start something, you know, especially me, if I can do it. I mean, I had three kids, three young kids at the time. I was married. I had a full-time job and I still pulled this off uh, back then. I mean, it wasn't easy and it did kind of burn me out after a while, but honestly, um, you know, I'm glad I did it. And, you know, I tell people all the time and if, had all kinds of people tell me that I've, I've helped them. So anyway, um, that's the cool thing. And that's why I started making music, um, you know, for that reason, just because, hey, I discovered that I could and it's something I always wanted to do. And because I think that it's also, um, it's just cool to inspire people and remind everybody that it isn't too late. You know, we don't have to just sit there and life doesn't have to suck, right? You don't have to have all these regrets. So that's my story and hopefully it, um, it kind of helps you. So I got a question for you before I let you go. Um, tell me in the comments, you know, what's your music, you know, like maybe it's not music, but maybe you have something that you always wish that you had done when you were younger. Maybe you wanted to write a book. Maybe you wanted to start a business. You know, what is it? What is something that you always wanted to try? And just let me know in the comments below. And let's talk about it, man. I want to know, you know, because I want you to start something if you want. And if you don't want to start something, that's cool, too. But um, just know that the option is out there for you. So anyway, again, um, let me know in the comments. And if you could hit the like, hit the subscribe, because I'm going to be pumping out more stuff. I'm going to be playing some more songs for you and all that stuff. And then uh, stick around. I'm going to put a link to my song called Change the World, the very first song that I wrote, recorded, released, et cetera, et cetera. Check it out. Let me know what you think. You know, it's like a, you know, the first song from some late blooming guy <laughs> that never played music, you know, for a big chunk of his life. So anyway, I'm rambling. Thanks again for stopping. Comments. Talk to you next time.